Welcome to the Gospel Road. Wrapping up the week, getting ready for the weekend. Hopefully you've got a lot of things planned going on. Still watching a lot of Netflix, are you? I actually binged watch, if you call it that, kind of off and on. But Fuller House, I was telling a friend about that, and they're like, really, you watch that? I'm like, come on, I watched Fuller House when I was a kid. Oh, no well. So many things going on, but again, things are opening up again. Uh, I got a friend of mine who uh, performs. He actually has a gig tonight, so he's pretty excited about that. But hopefully, whatever you're doing, you're uh, staying safe and uh, enjoying time with friends and family this weekend as we are really seeing those warmer days. Summer right around the corner. In fact, the official kickoff of summer, just what, a couple weeks away? Something like that, even though the weather is already here. I'm sure a lot of yard work to be done this weekend, too. Things to get done. But, again, be safe, be smart. The really hot days, stay hydrated. Hydration, hydration, hydration. (laughs) All right, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached and so you believed. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope, in this life only, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as a By a man came to death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each is his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subject under his feet, but when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? 
If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? Why are we in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts of Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor as is right, and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another kind for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for stars differs from star and glory. So, is it with the resurrection of the dead? What is sown in perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living, a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must be put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must be put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15. Talking about resurrection, the resurrection of Christ, the dying of the mortal body and the raising of the spiritual body. Changing. Changes. Things are not always going to remain the same, be the same, stay the same. Belief. Philosophy. What is it that you are thinking? Are you steadfast in your thoughts? Do you believe everything? What are you standing for? And there's many things that you can pull from this, not just on the spiritual side, but on the physical side. When you are trying to figure out your journey and move forward. There are certain things that 
are under a law or a way that it needs to be done. You know, under that subjection, as it's talking about how everything is subjected under God's subjection. But at the same time, as we are also trying to figure out how to make it through, to get through those tough times, having that hope, having that will to move on, having the purity, not really purity is what I want to say, but you know, really being strong, being steadfast, being immovable. Here's what I need to do today. Here's what I need to get done. I need to do this. It's going me going to work every day. We all going to work every day. We have our list of things that need to be done. These are things that have to be done. It's our daily task sheet. That has to be done today before we work on another project or something else that needs to be done because this needs to be done for life to happen, for the job to go on. For me, I go into the radio station every day. Certain shows have to happen every day. If that show does not happen, the station's not on the air. So then I need to make sure that is all taken care of, that is all done before I then move forward to maybe a special project because we have an event or something else that we need to get done. So it's that extra piece that I am doing to do that supports what we're doing on a daily basis. You can say we all have our daily rituals of getting our coffee, of doing this. Those are kind of set in stone, but... On the same token, it's not that they don't change. It doesn't move. I get my coffee every day. I go to Caribou. I do that. Except for this week because of the curfews, it wasn't open. So guess what? I ended up getting coffee at the radio station instead. That was something. I have my coffee every day, but I changed the way of getting my coffee because my one opportunity wasn't open. We have opportunities that happen every day. And there's certain things that need to go, but then you can maybe learn a different or a quicker way to get things done. That's where it comes down to that collaboration, that conversation that you have with one another when you're trying to figure things out and do things. I mean, you've been working the same job for 10 years. This is the way you've been doing it for that entire time. Somebody new comes along and it's a fresh perspective and they, maybe they see something a little different. Sometimes we can get so caught up in how we do things that we do not have the opportunity to maybe figure out a different way to get it done. You mow the grass the exact same way every week, but then go, well, maybe I need to do that in a different way because we find that it's better for the grass that you're mowing it in different ways. I'm lazy. I don't. I mow it the same way, but our yard's not the greatest anyway. Just certain things need to be done in a certain way. And as you're putting things together, I mean, again, you're working a job. I'm working a job. I'm perishable, but my job is imperishable because I may not be at my job forever. I leave and somebody else comes in to take over to do the same job. We are constantly working through that journey. We are constantly moving forward. You know, we have that goal and you believe in God, that goal at the end of all this is to to get to heaven. You have that goal working every day to get to retirement. You have that goal, the shorter goal to get to the weekend. You have the even shorter goal to get to the end of the business day so you can go home. It's those goals that we have that we put in place. So that gives us something to aim for, where we're going, what we're doing, what needs to be done so we know that's going to happen. You have vacation or a day off coming up and you know all this needs to be done before you have that day that you're taking. This is where we get our work ethic to understand what we need to do. Some, again, stronger than others. But then we are encouraging one another to be better, to do better, to have that better peace, that better work ethic, that better life as we're going forward to get things taken care of, to get things done. And we're doing that as a team, one way or another, at work or at home. 
You have friends that encourage you. That's your team. You have mentors. They inspire you. It can be part of your team. You have those that motivate you. you know, that's how we all work together. We have those daily conversations to really help each other be the best that we can be. And then sometimes with those conversations, we are either going to learn something or we're not. We're going to believe something or we're not. I mean, if you walk over to turn a light switch on, you believe that light is going to come on because that's what it's supposed to do. It's that faith that you know it's going to happen. And that's how we live our lives every day. You have faith that you're going to go out every morning and start your car. Things can happen. It might not. You take it to the mechanic, you get it fixed. You go to work and you have faith your computer is going to turn on. You don't, you have to call the IT department. See, we all have that step that we do every day and things that we have as we're moving forward. And some are able to use that to really strengthen and go, I can really take that step. And some that really are are timid and scared. To be honest, me, even doing this and and saying what I say scares me. People listen. And I'm and I'm very happy for that. I don't I, I really have no expectation that people are going to listen to the podcast. I mean and I am very happy that you do and I appreciate that. I'm grateful. And I hope that it really does something to you. But again, this is me kind of like talking through things in my mind as this is what I know I need to do. And this is what I'm seeing. And wow, I need to apply that to my life. I need to apply this to my job so I can do it better. So I can be better at that to be better for myself and be better for those that I'm working with to be better for myself and be better for my friends. Cause I can apply this to my life. Be better for my family because I can apply this. Taking all those pieces, putting it together to come up with that choice, that decision, that belief that you are going to make your way through on your journey that you are moving forward with. 1 Corinthians 15. That's what we looked at today. Read it for yourself. What does it say to you? How does it help you be that better person? What does it do for you to really expand on who you are? Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless.